Welcome to a presentation on Eclampsia by Dr. Ignatius Cole. Uh, in case you haven't watched the video about uh, preeclampsia, you should watch it to gain more information. This is Dr. Ignatius Cole. Today we will learn about introduction to eclampsia, the clinical features of eclampsia, the complications of eclampsia, the management, emergency management in the emergency room, the medical management and the obstetric management, pictures resumen of so uh, watch the preeclampsia video posted on this channel, our link is in the description. So uh, to introduce uh, eclampsia, it actually means flash of lightning in Greek. So in majority however, it does not occur quickly like a flash of lightning. The disease is preceded by the features of severe preeclampsia, as I mentioned earlier, clearly given by the mnemonic trapsy. Preeclampsia, when complicated with grand mal seizure, nowadays called generalized tonic clonic seizure, and or coma is called eclampsia. So, when does this seizure occur? It can occur antepartum before the onset of labors, intrapartum. Uh, seizures occur for the first time during labor or postpartum seizures occur for the first time in the preparium period usually within 48 to 72 hours of delivery uh, sometimes uh, fits occur beyond 48 hours but less than four weeks which is called late postpartum eclampsia so they can occur antepartum intrapartum and postpartum antepartum being the most common so uh, when this seizure occur, it is like a typical seizure. There is the premonitory stage, the stage of aura, the tonic stage or the stage of uh, tonicity or rigidity, and the clonic stage when the body is rather uh, chronically contracting, contracting, relaxing, contracting, relaxing, and the stage of coma or the post-ictal confusion, which we say for other seizures. <laughs> Um, so after watching the rather uncomfortable video about uh, women in uh, eclamptic fit or seizure, we can see the stages quite carefully. The pre monitor stays where the patient become unconscious, where there is twitching of the muscles of the face, tongue and limbs. The eyeballs are rolled or are turned to one side and become quite fixed. And this pre monitor stays last for about 30 seconds. The tonic stays where the whole body goes into a tonic spasm. The trunk in an opiostotonous position, this is the opiostotonous, the bow like position. Uh, quite seen in other disorders like tetanus as well and the limbs are flexed and the hand is clenched and the respiration ceases and the tongue will protrude between the teeth sinuses appear because the whole body has gone into spasm the diaphragm is frozen and the patient cannot breathe and becomes blue the eyeballs become fixed the person gazes strongly in a direction this stays last about 30 seconds Uh, this is a male, uh, not a pregnant woman, but uh, this, this figure so clearly the tonic stays. And uh, now the clonic stays, so all the voluntary muscles will undergo alternative contraction and relaxation. So the twitching will start in the face, then involve one side of the extremities, and ultimately the whole body is involved in uh, this convulsion. And the biting of the tongue occurs. And breathing becomes torturous, and the blood stained, frothy secretions will fill the mouth, sinuses will disappear. The stays will last for one to four minutes. This is a tongue bite injury occurring during an eclamptic convulsion. And this is a child in chronic stage of seizure. This is a man in chronic stage of seizure. About the stage of coma. Uh, following the feed, the patient will pass into a stage of coma. Uh, it may last for a brief period or in others 
There could be deep coma which persists after convulsion. On occasion, the patient will be confused, the postictal confusion, and will fail to remember all the happenings. Uh, rarely, the coma, this coma stage can occur without any apparent convulsion. So, what are the other features of convulsion? The seizures are usually multiple, recurring at variable intervals. If uh, they occur in quick succession, like the status epilepticus, this is called status ep eclampticus. And during the convulsions or following the convulsion, the temperature usually rises, the pulse and respiratory rates are increased, and so the blood pressure, so BP, pulse, temperature, respiratory rate all are increased, and the urine output is markedly diminished, proteinuria is pronounced, and the blood uric acid is raised. So these are the maternal complications of eclampsia. It can affect any and all of the systems. The injuries can be tongue bite, injuries due to fall from bed and the bed sores. Pulmonary complications can raise from edema, pneumonia, ARDS, and embolism. Hyperpyroxia can occur, cardiac failure, cardiomyopathy, renal failure, hepatic necrosis, cerebral edema and hemorrhage, neurological deficits, disturbed vision, and DIC and thrombocytopenia, and postpartum shock, sepsis, and psychosis can occur. Uh, remember trapsy? No, normally. Like, uh, uh, preeclampsia like thrombocytopenia, renal, abdominal pain, pulmonary edema, cerebral hemorrhage, and uh, retinal hemorrhage too, and more. So how do you manage this? So in majority of cases, eclampsia is preceded by severe preeclampsia, so knowing and recognizing early detection of uh, preeclampsia will uh, help to deal with uh, eclampsia and prevent eclampsia as well. However, sometimes eclampsia can occur bypassing the preeclamptic stage, and so it is not always a preventable condition. So, uh, in the ER or the emergency room, what will you do? Uh, you call for extra help, put the patient in lateral recumbent position, maintain the airway A, and breathing oxygen by non rebreather marks at 10 liters per minute, commence IV lines, uh, establish IV lines with one or two white book handlers. Use a full ease catheter with a urometer and um, use pulse oximeter to monitor oxygen saturation and uh, control seizures by using magnesium sulfate. You can give breaches regimen, uh, monitor vials, vitals, and the fetal status as well as magnesium toxicity. We'll talk about this later. Control hypotension with the previously mentioned uh, antihypertensive, uh, melanie high, labetalol, hydrazine, methyl dopa, and use fluids like crystalloids or colloids. Uh, suction by oropharyngeal uh, suction apparatus and use diuretics for pulmonary edema and use uh, send investigations like CBC, SDLT, LDS, creatinine, uric acid and urine analysis. So uh, this Pritchard's regimen is actually quite simple uh, and is uh, the most widely used. So 4 gram of 20% solution over 5 minutes. IV. First of all we load the loading doses 4 gram over 5 minutes, 20% solution to 4, 5 is 24 gram, 5 minutes, 20% solution. Followed by this uh, 10 gram uh, IM, so uh, 5 gram of uh, magnesium sulfate in each buttock, so 5 gram uh, MgSO4 in this buttock, 5 gram MgSO4 in this buttock, in the upper outer quadrant, uh, if you have seen giving uh, intramuscular injection, so this is it. And the maintenance dose is actually 5 gram of I am of uh, this uh, magnesium sulfate in each alternate buttock. Another is intravenous uh, resume, but I have not seen this being given. We use this most of the time. This is quite simple too. So how do we monitor magnesium toxicity? There are these uh, three, four parameters. Loss of deep tendon reflexes, like the uh, uh, this patellar reflex or biceps reflex. Decrease respiratory rate less than 12 a minute. Urine output decreases to less than 30 ml per hour. There can be chest pain and heart block. So these four, we have to look for these four features to see if magnesium toxicity is occurring. Uh, if magnesium toxicity has occurred, stop this magnesium therapy. Estimate serum magnesium and creatinine levels and give calcium gluconate. The formula of 10, 10 ml, 10% IV over 10 minutes. 
So how do we manage status eclamp because if this uh, fits or seizes like quickly without any gap, without any regaining of consciousness, you keep sodium 5 pentone, 0 0.5 gram dissolved in 20 ml of 5% dextrose, slow IV. So uh, during the seizure, uh, you can keep the mouth gag to prevent tongue bite and uh, clear the air passes with a suction to uh, enable the uh, proper respiration, hit on the head to one side and take off the pillow, raise the foot and give oxygen until the sinuses disappear. So what are the indications of intubation? So if the patient remains unconscious in the post seizure period, if the seizures are not controlled, if there are signs of aspiration and there is persistent hypoxia, we might even need to go as far as intubating the patient. So how do we uh, the obstructive management. So, obstructive management is basically if the person is not in labor, conduct labor. If the person is already in labor, then do the delivery. If the person is in labor, do the delivery. If do CS if there is obstructive indication. If not in labor, and if the fits are controlled, even if the person is tom also, can't do the delivery. If he is preterm, do the delivery. If and the baby is dead also do the delivery so delivery is the ultimate option and the only option uh, please subscribe to this uh, channel uh, thank you